First is a model-free way to check for machining errors. Instead of solving an underlying problem, the traditional method fits the problem to the model, which must be adjusted every time it is machined. This method is very time-consuming and costly. In addition, the cement gap on the inner surface is also very wide, and as a result, the bonding strength and fracture resistance are reduced and require a larger zirconia occlusal surface thickness. This in turn leads to the problem of having to do a lot of occlusal surface removal. In contrast, the method I'm going to introduce today is fairly simple and useful. All you need to do is scan the machined crown and overlay it with the design file for comparison. Maintaining your machine this way is very productive because you don't have to fit every crown that you machine. Let's explain how to scan. One feature that the Medit scanner has is smart color filtering, which allows you to scan only the crown cleanly. We're going to register the color of the gloves with smart color filtering and scan the crown while holding it with a gloved hand. First, click the smart color filtering feature. Press register colors, then start to extract colors. After enabling smart color filtering, the registered colors will be erased while scanning. When scanning crowns, it is recommended to turn off all other filters except smart color filtering. Alternatively, you can stick the crown to the utility wax and scan it. Register the color of the utility wax. Prepare the wax by cutting it to the size of the scanner mirror. Scan the wax in the same way to register the color. Attach the wax to the crown and use it as a handle to rotate and scan. Reposition the wax and take additional scans of the area where the wax was stuck to complete it. When scanning with an intraoral scanner, there is a tilting problem when the inner and outer surfaces are connected. This also varies depending on the person scanning. I found that the error was greatest when scanning by hand. The error was reduced a bit when scanning using wax, but remained a problem. At the margin area where the inner and outer surfaces of the crown join, the angle changes abruptly, making it more prone to error. As a result, the inner and outer surfaces are each tilted as they come together, even though there is little problem. To solve this problem, I tried many different things. Among them, the following method worked best. Place the crown on a turntable and clamp the intraoral scanner to create an environment similar to a model scanner. Apply wax to the adjacent side of the crown and finish the scan by applying wax to the lingual or buccal side. As long as you keep a constant focal length, I think it's better to scan without interruption to reduce errors. On the left is the result of scanning with a gloved hand. In the middle is the result of scanning the wax with the handle. On the right is the result of scanning with the scanner fixed on a turntable. You can see that the results improve as you proceed from left to right. Sintered zirconia crowns tend to scan small due to light reflection. They must be sprayed. On the left is a scan before sintering. In the middle is a scan without spray after sintering. On the right is a scan after sintering and spraying. In the middle, we can see that the crown is scanned very small. Therefore, when scanning a sintered crown, it must be sprayed. This is the step after scanning the fabricated crown. You can compare the scanned file with the original design using software. We're going to show you how to use two different software. One is Medit Design and the other is Medit Crown Fit. Let's see how each software is different. First, you can validate the machined crowns using Medit Design. Download and launch the Medit Design app from your app box. Select and import the scanned crown and the crown design file. Since zirconia shrinks as it's sintered, it's machined under magnification. You will need to zoom out the crown to match the magnification for comparison. The magnification of the chalked crown we just imported is 1.2327, so we need to shrink the crown by 0.8112, which is 1 divided by 1.2327. Start transformation mode. Select the scanned crown. 
enter the appropriate scale factor, and press the OK button once to complete the reduction. Enter alignment mode. Use the auto align feature to align the crowns. If the alignment is not good, there may be a problem with magnification or a very large machining error. You can check the comparison results using the deviation display mode. Modify the scale on the left in 10 micrometers increments. Overall, you can see that the machining is good with an error range of plus minus 20 micrometers. This is a way to compare the machined crown with the original design file to see where machining errors occur. The next step is to verify with the Crown Fit app. Place the upper and lower jaw scans, the design file, and the fabricated crown scan file in each location and open them. If you have diagnostic scans, exclude them. If it's a pre-sintered crown, use transform mode to shrink it by the corresponding scale factor. Align the scanned crown to the design file using the crown alignment feature. This will show you where the inner and outer surfaces of the crown touch the scan file. This indicates the area and strength of the early contact on the inner surface and the adjacent surface, as well as the location and degree of occlusion. This is more accurate than fitting a physical plaster model. Of course, there's also deviation display mode available in the Medit design app, which is helpful if utilized properly. Here's a glazed crown for comparison. It looks like we'll have to do a lot of occlusal adjustments. So, in the Crown Fit app, you can virtually try on the fabricated crown in the patient's mouth and estimate where interferences will occur. So far, I've been showing you my typical crown machining with good results. Like the example on the right, however, the reality is that there's a possibility of problems like the one on the left. Now, we'll look at the issues that lead to these problems. Thank you.